Now, on another matter, as cracks keep forming in the Democrats' reckless taxing and spending spree, some of our colleagues seem to channel their frustration into even more radical attempts to attack our government institutions. In the span of a few hours, one Senate Democrats have renewed call to nuke the Senate and break the rules. And another published a national op-ed arguing the Democrats should attack the rule of law and pack the Supreme Court. Two frontal assaults on two branches of government proposed in the space of about two hours. Entire generations of statesmen would have seen either one of these unhinged proposals as Armageddon for our institutions. Ah, uh, but apparently today's Democrats try both at once and just call it Wednesday. We've heard false claims that Senate obeying our rules to address the debt limit somehow paves the way for radicals to break the rules. So Madam President, I'd ask consent that an additional statement on that subject appear at a different place in the record. Without objection. So look, we have discussed over and over again why Democrats will not be allowed to federalize our elections and lord over all 50 states like a self-appointed board of elections on steroids. My colleagues across the aisle have pushed absurd bills that would do things like neuter voter ID laws, make every state legalize ballot harvesting, turn the Federal Election Commission into a biased partisan body, and even send taxpayer money to political campaigns. It isn't about quote unquote voting rights, it's a naked power grab. Democrats have been pushing the same kinds of bills literally for years, even as their stated justifications have changed wildly. When Republicans win elections or start polling well, Democrats and the media say our democracy is badly broken on death's door and needs a radical overhaul. The answers presented are these policies. When Democrats win elections, Democrats and the media say our democracy is sterling, beyond reproach, and just needs some modest safeguards to protect the status quo. But again, the answers presented are the very same policies. Lately, their pretext has been demagogic attacks on reasonable state voting laws and proposals. If any state scraps any of the temporary pandemic procedures that Democrat operatives favor, the radical left says the sky is falling. But outside the liberal bubble, nobody buys this nonsense. The country's not buying the hysteria. On election day last month, listen to this, even in deep blue New York, voters rejected liberal ballot measures that would have liberalized no excuse absentee voting and loosened up the rules on voter registration. Both those were voted down in New York. Not even blue New York wants these policies to weaken their elections. But some, some Democrats want to break the Senate and trash its rules to force these sorts of things on all 50 states. It's beyond absurd. I understand my colleagues are frustrated they may not get to spend $4.9 trillion on their way out the door for Christmas. But believe me, lashing out at our democracy, at the Supreme Court, and at the Senate itself is not going to solve anything. 